Cummins Inc. Stock ticker CMI is a multinational company that designs, manufactures, and distributes engines, filtration, and power generation products. Founded in 1919, Cummins is now a $32 billion by market cap mobility monster that employs more than 73,000 people. The company reports results across five business segments. Distribution, 32% of fiscal year 2022 sales. Engine, 29%. Components, 28%. Power systems, 11%. New power, less than 1%. Cummins makes money by manufacturing, distributing, and supplying a range of diesel and natural gas engines and their related components. Many types of vehicles use these engines. Think heavy-duty trucks, medium-duty trucks, buses, recreational vehicles, construction machinery, agricultural machinery, and watercraft. That's a good start, and if that's all there were, this would be a pretty interesting investment case, but there's a lot more to it than that. Cummins is positioning itself for the future of mobility by investing in fully electric and hybrid powertrain systems, as well as hydrogen fuel cell technology. The uninitiated might assume that Cummins is just an engine company, and I wouldn't blame anyone for making that assumption. However, this simplistic view is missing the big picture. Cummins is providing a full suite of products to cater to present and future mobility, and power generation. The distinction is important. Everyday goods are often produced and moved around using the power generation products that Cummins manufactures and distributes. It's true today, and Cummins is doing its best to make sure that it remains true for the many tomorrows yet to come. Cummins has been a vital element of the industrial backbone of the American economy. This is why Cummins has been wildly successful for more than a century. And with prescient preparations for the next era in mobility and power generation, Cummins may see even more success over the next century. That bodes incredibly well for the company's ability to drive its revenue, profit, and dividend higher over the coming years. To date, Cummins has increased its dividend for 18 consecutive years. The 10-year dividend growth rate is 12.9%, which is very strong. However, more recent dividend raises have been in the 8% area. Still, I think that's more than enough growth to go along with the stock's yield of 3.1%. This yield, by the way, is 40 basis points higher than its own five-year average. This larger-than-average dividend is protected by a low payout ratio of 34.2%. Boy, there's a lot to like here. Yield, growth, and safety are all there. Looking at business growth, Cummins increased its revenue from $17.3 billion in fiscal year 2013 to $28.1 billion in fiscal year 2022. That's a compound annual growth rate of 5.5%. I'm usually looking for a mid-single digit top line growth rate from a fairly mature business like Cummins and it's right there. Meanwhile, earnings per share grew from $7.91 to $15.12 over this period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 7.5%. That's really good. Not amazing, but I think this is a very satisfactory level of bottom line growth from this kind of business. It also explains why we've been seeing the dividend grow at somewhere around 8% annually over the last several years. The two growth rates match up. Excess bottom line growth was mostly fueled by consistent buybacks. For perspective on that, the outstanding share count has been reduced by approximately 24% over the last 10 years. Looking forward, CFRA is projecting that Cummins will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 18% over the next three years. In my view, that's an aggressive number. It's more than twice as high as what Cummins has historically produced over a longer period of time, although a very short period of time could certainly go many different ways. I think it's worth highlighting this passage from CFRA which would back up a sanguine view on the near-term prospects for Cummins, and I quote, Cummins should benefit from a strong truck replacement cycle after several years of overworked trucks due to the pandemic boom. We also think that relatively high fuel costs should spur demand for newer trucks, which tend to be more fuel efficient than the units being replaced, unquote. A bit of a coiled spring effect that's been created here in terms of existing truck inventory, which bodes well for Cummins. So there's a demand boost on one hand, also there could be a boost from lack of supply, as CFRA points out that, and I quote, lingering supply chain issues for the industry as a whole will prevent the industry from boosting production sufficiently to meet end market demand and therefore should help on pricing, unquote. This means supply troubles are showing up just as demand could be picking up. That's an effective one-two punch for Cummins and its ability to control pricing. In addition, and simultaneously to all this, there's also the background tailwind of a secular move toward cleaner emissions. 
On this point, CFRA states, again, and I quote, we think increasing anti-carbon regulation could be a driver for Cummins' nascent new power segment. In March, Cummins launched Accelera by Cummins, a new brand in the segment, which brings more zero emission vehicles to the market, unquote. Cummins has long been a go-to diesel engine brand, but it's slowly turning into a go-to all-encompassing brand for mobility and power generation. If you want great propulsion today, you go to Cummins. If you want great propulsion tomorrow, you may very well still be going to Cummins. With all that in the mix, I can see a case for being enthusiastic about what's possible for Cummins over the next few years. Still, I'd be leery about being too far out on a limb compared to what the business has demonstrated over a longer period of time. I think it's quite possible, even likely, that Cummins will grow faster than usual over the next few years, but I'd be cautious around pinning my hopes on a high teens growth rate. That said, Cummins doesn't really need to grow that fast in order to be an appealing long-term investment right now. Even something closer to a low double-digit growth rate, which would be more in line with norms, would still offer the company the ability to grow the dividend at a high single-digit or better rate over the next few years. Nothing wrong with that at all. If you can get a 3% plus starting yield and a high single-digit dividend growth rate, you're setting yourself up for a double-digit annualized total return, assuming a static value. Evaluation. And compounding money at a low double digit rate adds up in a hurry. Moving over to the balance sheet, Cummins has a rock solid financial position. The long term debt to equity ratio is 0.5, while the interest coverage ratio is just over 15. Cummins is running a capital intensive business model, and I think these numbers are very good when viewed within that context. Profitability is robust. Net margin has averaged 8.9% over the last five years, while return on equity has averaged 27.1%. Cummins is putting up some pretty strong high returns on capital, which is encouraging. This is a great business, and there are reasons to believe that it'll be even greater in 10 years. And the company does benefit from durable competitive advantages that include economies of scale, switching costs, barriers to entry, IP, R&D, technological know-how, and brand power. Of course, there are risks to consider. Litigation, regulation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Cummins has a unique competitive landscape as the company is often competing against some of its most important customers, such as truck manufacturers. Cummins has a high degree of exposure to economic cycles. Customer concentration is a key risk with the top four customers accounting for approximately 30% of annual sales. Since propulsion technology could change faster than Cummins can adapt to, or in a way that's unforeseen, there's technological risk present. Any broad changes across trucking and or commercial transportation in general would impact Cummins. These risks should be carefully thought over, but so should the quality and growth of the business. Also, after the stock's near 20% decline in price from its 52-week high, the valuation should be carefully thought over. The price earnings ratio for the stock is sitting at 11.1. This is undemanding and well below the broader market's earnings multiple. It's also well off the stock's own five-year average PE ratio of 15.1. The sales multiple of 0.9 is also quite a bit lower than its own five-year average of 1.3, and the yield, as noted earlier, is significantly higher than its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 7.5%. This is well below the the demonstrated dividend growth rate from the business over the last decade, the payout ratio is low and the near-term forecast for EPS growth is in the high teens. So it does look like I'm being overly cautious against that backdrop. However, the last few dividend raises from Cummins has been in this 7.5% area. Moreover, this is a cyclic business model with a lot of questions around execution on future mobility plans. And I wouldn't forget about the customer concentration risk either. In the end, I'd rather err on the side of caution and leave room to be pleasantly surprised. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $288.96. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates CMI as a four-star stock with a fair value estimate of $255. CFR rates CMI as a four-star buy with a 12-month target price of $266. I came out a bit high this time around, averaging the three numbers out, 
gives us a final valuation of $269.99, which would indicate the stock is possibly 19% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Cummins Inc. is a high quality company that is performing incredibly well as it balances current mobility offerings against future mobility solutions. Fundamentally speaking, there's really nothing to strongly dislike here. And with a market beating yield, a low payout ratio, double digit long-term dividend growth, nearly 20 consecutive years of dividend increases and the potential that shares are 19% undervalued, long-term dividend growth investors looking for a solid, well-rounded business to invest in ought to be aware of this name right now. And now for a special news announcement, Automatic Data Processing Inc. stock ticker ADP just increased its dividend for the 49th consecutive year, this time by 12%. ADP is almost a dividend king. Nearly 50 straight years of dividend growth and shareholders are still getting double digit raises. It's incredible. You know, I think this company ought to rename itself to Automatic Dividend Raise Processing. If you don't yet have ADP in your portfolio, this high quality HCM business should definitely be on your radar. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six figure portfolio, which I call the fire fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early thirties. I made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon. And I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who've been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alert. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.